Today we'll be discussing the fundamentals of performing a transvaginal ultrasound, focusing on the essential techniques to ensure accurate and effective imaging. So let's begin by breaking down the three steps involved in, in starting the scanning. There are three essential steps to get started. First, how to hold the prop. Second, understanding image orientation. And finally, mastering prop movements. So before we get into each step, let's take a closer look at the transvaginal prop itself. The transvaginal prop is shaped like a long cylinder with a handle and small footprint at its tip. Most importantly, it features a marker such as a notch, typically located on the dorsal side near the handle. This marker is essential for determining the prop's orientation during scanning. Now that we understand the prop's, the prop's structure, let's go over how to prepare for the scan. I assume you've already applied the gel and are wearing sterile gloves. Next, position the prop so that the indicator is at the 12 o'clock position, facing the ceiling, and align your thumb with the prop's indicator. With the prop properly positioned, let's move on to acquiring the longitudinal view. Now, to obtain the longitudinal view, the prop is gently inserted into the patient's vagina with the indicator positioned at 12 o'clock. In this sagittal plane, you should be able to visualize the bladder, cervix, uterus, and the cul-de-sac. On the monitor display, the bladder appears in the upper left portion of the screen. The cervix is typically positioned toward the right side of the screen. But in case of the uterus is antiverted, the fundus will appear on the, right, on the left side of the screen. But if it is retroverted, the fundus will be seen on the right side. Next, let's rotate the prop to obtain the transverse view. The transverse view of the uterus is obtained by rotating the transducer 90 degrees counterclockwise from the longitudinal vein, positioning the indicator towards the patient's right side, which corresponding to the 9 o'clock position. Now let's move further to identify the ovaries. To image the ovary begin in the transverse plane at the widest dimension of the uterus. Then angle the prop toward the right side following the course of the right ovary ligament. This will guide you to the right ovary, which typically appears overlying the internal elite vessels. It's important to understand how to move the prop correctly. One key movement is rocking which involves tilting the prop along its long, longitudinal axis. This adjusts the field of view and helps in visualizing different structures. To clarify, in the longitudinal view, rocking means moving the prop up and down, while in transverse view, rocking means tilting the prop side to side. Here again in this picture, you can see the rocking movement in the longitudinal aspect, which is moving the prop up and down. And in transverse view, moving the rocking movements means moving the prop from side to side. Another important prop movement is fanning. So in the longitudinal view, fanning is performed by moving the prop side to side. Whereas in the transverse view, it involves moving the prop up and down. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. If you found this video helpful, please support us by subscribing into the channel, liking the video and sharing it with others. Thank you for watching.